the, the rules that we're going to use here are going to be exactly the same as what we learned from multiplication. So it's basically everything that you already know, but I'm going to write it down anyway just to make sure. If we're dividing a positive number by a positive number, what you're going to get is always a positive number. So for instance, a positive 12 divided by a positive 3 gives you a positive 4. You all know that, right? But again, if you have a negative sign divided by a negative sign, just like as if it were multiplication, you'd expect to get a negative answer, I'm sorry, a positive answer, and that's what you get with division. Negative 10 divided by negative 5 is going to give you, that gives you a 2, but it's going to be a positive 2. So these rules are exactly for multiplication. Multiply positive times positive, give positive, negative times negative, also get positive. So it's the exact same thing for when you're applying it to a division here. When you have the same signs, if they're both positive or both negative, and you're dividing them, then you always get positive answers. All right, now let's switch it up a little bit and say, well, what if you have a positive numerator and a negative denominator, or a negative numerator and a positive denominator? In both of these cases, you always get a negative answer. Right? So just to give you a couple of examples, what about 6 divided by negative 2? So you see how there are different signs. You get negative 3. And what if you get negative 8 divided by positive 2, where the negative's on the top? You get the exact same thing. It's a negative number, 4, like this. So the rule of thumb is when multiplying terms or when dividing terms, if the signs are the same, either both positive or both negative, you always get positive answers. If the signs are different, you always get negative answers. So as I said before, it's actually much easier to multiply and divide terms than it actually is to add them. Because you don't have to think about which one's bigger, you just follow the rules. So let's go on and, and work through some easier problems and working our way on into the more uh, difficult, but it's going to be following the same sort of deal. What if we have 64 divided by negative 4, and we'll divide that again by negative 2. So, same sort of thing. We look inside the parentheses and we see we can't really do anything with those. Uh, so we leave it alone and we look for multiplying and dividing and of course we see the divisions and when you do division of, or multiplication you go left to right just like with multiplication. So we're first going to only focus on the first two and we'll save the third one for a later step. So what we have is 64 divided by negative 4. So we have positive divided by negative. The answer, because of the rules above, they're different signs, you're going to get a negative. What's 64 divided by 4? It's going to be 16. So that takes care of this, but then we're still dividing by the negative 2. So in the next step, we'll take the 16 divided by the 2, but now it's negative divided by negative, which means that you're always going to get a positive. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So you see, it's exactly the same rules as before, we're just doing divisions instead of multiplications. And we'll just increase the problem complexity just a little bit with each, uh, with each time here. What if we have negative 6 divided by, now here's where people start to get confused for no reason really, but this is where it happens a lot, when you have fractions involved. So here's negative 1 third, and here you have negative 1. So this is just, uh, you got to realize that this fraction really is division wrapped up in itself, kind of. But we're just going to treat it as a thing, we call it a fraction. We have a negative divided by a negative, so you automatically know you're going to get a positive answer. And the way you really should handle this is uh, when you have division of anything involving a fraction, you need to change it into multiplication and then you flip the second guy over. So that's, that's a rule that we learned way back with when fractions, you know. When you multiply fractions, you just multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. But when you divide fractions, and in this case, you, this is a fraction too because it's 6 over 1. Any, any number is a fraction, just that divided by itself is divided by 1. So you have a fraction divided by a fraction, you change the division to multiplication, and you take the second fraction, the one you're dividing by, and you flip it over. So every division problem of fractions always becomes multiplication, and you already know how to multiply fractions. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to make it negative 6, and we're going to change this, literally change it to multiplication, but then this needs to be flipped over, so it'll be negative 3 over 1. I literally take them and flip them upside down. I've still got to divide by negative 1. I haven't done any of that stuff yet. But now this is multiplied, and this is very simple now because to multiply fractions, we multiply the tops and we multiply the bottoms. So it's 6 times, or I should say negative 6 times, take the negative to be on the top, negative 6 times negative 3 is positive 18, and then you have the 1 and the 1 on the bottom multiplied to give you 1. So the answer that you get from this should be positive because negative 
times negative should give you positive. Six times three is 18, one times one is one. Now you're still dividing by negative one. So again, you gotta do the same thing again. You can do it however you like, but uh, you could, well, you already know how to divide by, I guess you could do it either way. I'll probably show you both ways. But if you just do a division by, if this were just a positive one, you know anything divided by itself, this is 18 divided by one, so it would just be 18. But since it's positive divided by negative, it's gonna be negative 18. So that's gonna be the final answer. Another way to do it, it's really kind of not worth doing, but you could do it like this. You could say 18 divided by one or 18 over one. Change this to multiplication. Then you have to take this and flip it over. But what is this? This is negative one over one. So you flip it over, it's gonna be um, negative one over one. I mean, basically it's the same thing when you flip it upside down and you multiply this. Uh, what you're gonna get is negative 18 times one, 18, one times one is one, negative 18, right? Because negative times positive gives you negative, 18 times one, one times one, and then you get the negative 18, same as here. So it's kind of not really worth doing when you're dividing by one, because we all know how to divide by one. We, it's just the number itself, right? But in, for any other fraction division, change it to multiplication, flip the other fraction over to get the answer. All right. What do we have? Well, let's say we have the problem, eight times negative 18. And then on the bottom of the fraction, we have three times negative 12. Now this is where this, and as we start going into the more of the problems, uh, a lot of students get confused because when you have very large fractions of things on the top of the numerator, with the numerator, and the very large terms on the bottom, sometimes it gets confusing as to what you do. But that's why we're gonna work on a lot of problems so you don't have that confusion anymore. There's a lot of ways to do this. You could take eight times 18, that would be a, well, negative 18, that would be a big number on the top, and you could take three times a negative 12 and get negative 36 on the bottom. But then you'd have a big number on the top and a big number on the bottom, and then you would have to simplify the fraction. You'd divide by something and you'd make it as simple as you could. You could totally do that, there's no problem. But it's easier if you see a way that you can simplify it ahead of time to chop all the numbers down to smaller pieces in the beginning by dividing by common terms, then their final answer is already going to be simple. So what you do is you look here and you say, well, I have this is multiplied by this, this is multiplied by this, and they're all in a fraction divided like this. I know that three divided by three is one, and I know that 18 divided by three is six. Now I still have a negative sign, don't worry, don't forget about that. But I can divide them because I can divide the top and bottom by a, of a fraction by anything I want as long as I do it to the top and the bottom. So three divided by three is one, six, and 18 divided by three, again, dividing by the same thing, is six. But then I look here and I say, well, wait a minute, I can divide this by four, and I can also divide this by four. So eight divided by four is two, and 12 divided by four is three. So you see, instead of having these really big numbers, I have just the numbers in red, which are much smaller to deal with. So what I would have here is, this is now two times negative six. The negative hasn't been changed. So two times six is 12, and positive times negative means it's gonna be a negative 12 uh, over here. And on the bottom, it's one times three is three, but it's positive times negative, so it's really negative three. And then you go and you check your division rules. Positive divided by, I'm sorry, negative divided by negative gives you positive, 12 divided by three is four, and that's the answer, positive four. Now. What we did is we simplified everything to begin with by dividing by common numbers. We divided these two numbers by three, and we divided these by two numbers by four, right? And we simplified, we multiplied, and all that. If you were to take eight times 18, negative 18, get a number, three times ne the negative 12 gives you negative 36. Then you would have a large number divided by negative 36. If you were to simplify that fraction by dividing again and again to get to the simplest form, you would just get four. So you get exactly the same thing no matter how you choose to do it. But it's very often easier to do it this way where you're canceling terms in the beginning uh, just to avoid having to figure out what eight times 18 is, which is kind of big. All right, next guy, let's open a bracket up and let's say we have 60 divided by negative five, uh, close bracket, open another bracket, eight divided by negative two, like this. All right, so we, again, we have to do what's inside of the parentheses first, but this is just numbers in here. We can't do anything there. So then we expand a little bit and say, well, here's another bracket, kind of a parenthesis. We, we change the shape of it, call it a bracket. So we have to do what's inside here first, and then inside of there, 
and then we'll handle the fact that they're multiplied together at the very end because multiplication and division would come after parentheses. So what is 60 divided by 5? It's 12, but it's positive divided by negative, so what you're going to get is negative 12, according to our rules. 8 divided by 2 is 4, but it's positive divided by negative, so it's actually negative 4. And then I have these multiply. What's 12 times 4? It's 48, but negative times a negative is going to give you positive 48. So the answer to this is actually positive 48. All right, let's do one last problem in this section. And what we're going to have for our last problem is what if we have negative 16 uh, multiplied by 3 divided by 2. That's in the numerator of a fraction. And then we have a negative 2 to the fourth power. Okay, there's a lot of ways you can do this. Um, but there's a couple of rules of thumb I want to make sure you remember from your previous studying of algebra. When you have something in the numerator of a fraction and in, in the denominator of a fraction, you kind of need to treat this numerator as like there's invisible parentheses here that you can't see. Because it's in a numerator, it's kind of locked together with parentheses around it. So we need to try to do what's inside of here first. Uh, and then, of course, we handle the denominator separately. And then at the very end, this fraction bar, which becomes division, is going to be done later because in our order of operations, division and multiplication come almost last, and then there's addition and subtraction. But the very first thing you do in your order of operations is always the parentheses first, right? And then after that's exponents. But see, inside of this parentheses, I'm telling you, it's invisible parentheses. The reason I'm telling you this is because students might look at this and say, well, I don't see any parentheses. I don't have to do that stuff on the top. And they get confused. When you see something in the numerator of a fraction, there's invisible parentheses around that term. So that means you have to do it first. That's why I'm telling you this. So let's go and do this first, and then we'll handle the exponents, and we'll go from there. So what would we have in the top? Well, inside of here, we have multiplication and division. So those are at the same level. We go left to right. What is 16 times 3? 16 times 3, and negative times positive means you're going to have a negative 48, because 16 times 3 is 48. But we still have to divide by 2. And on the bottom, we still have a negative 2 to the fourth power. All right. So again, there's invisible parentheses around this. I have to do this first. What's 48 divided by uh, 2? 48 divided by 2 is 24. Negative divided by positive means it's negative 24 on the top. And on the bottom, what we have is negative 2 raised to the fourth power. So we have a number in the top, negative 24, and we have a negative 2 raised to the fourth power in the bottom. So we're done with the top. And then we look to the bottom. What comes after parentheses in order of operations? It's exponents. So we have this exponent to deal with here. So we have negative 24, and now we have to figure out what is negative 2 to the fourth. So it might be helpful to actually write that out. We'll have negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Because sometimes you get confused if you don't, we don't write things out. So what we have from these two will be positive 4. And from these two, we'll also have positive 4. Because 2 times 2 is 4, negative times negative is positive, negative times negative is positive, and 4 times 4 is 16. Looks like a big happy face, right? So what I get on the bottom is actually a positive number. Even though I was multiplying negative, since I did it 4 times, I actually got a positive answer on the bottom, 16. So now it's just a fraction. Top divided by bottom, and then I have a negative on the top divided by positive on the bottom. But I don't have, 24 does not divide by 16 evenly. So what we end up doing is we simplify the fraction. We can divide by 8. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times 2 is 16. So we just divide it by top and bottom by 8. And so the negative sign stays the same. Nothing has changed. Negative 3 halves. That's the answer. Negative 3 divided by 2. Or you can write the negative sign on the top. You can write it in front of the fraction. You can write it on the bottom. As long as there's a negative there somewhere to tell you that that fraction is negative, that's the final answer. So the main takeaway from this is that when we're doing division and simplifying expressions in algebra, the same rules apply for how to handle the signs as we have already been using for multiplying terms in algebra. Same things. If the signs are the same, like positive divided by positive or negative divided by negative, you're always going to get a positive answer. If the signs are different, like positive divided by negative or negative divided by positive, and you're dividing them, you're just going to get a negative answer. Same exact rules for multiplication. So make sure you can do these. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll increase the complexity just a little bit, but the rules will be the same. We just have to be careful to make sure we're doing everything correctly step by step.
learn anything at mathandscience.com.